Hello everyone, I'm Basic Materials, welcome to the Basic Materials Project. Uh, as usual, like and subscribe, uh, and check us out at www.thebasicmaterialsproject.com. Alright, so we've just uh, got a channel news update for you today. Uh, basically, just to serve as a bit of a memory of all the stuff we've got up to with these past few Basic Materials episodes. Uh, yeah, C++ ASAP, uh, with C++ as simple as possible. And uh, we also had uh, Dogecoin, where we had a double building Dogecoin from source on Linux Fedora Workstation 35. Yeah, the C++ ASAPs on Linux Fedora Workstation 35. Uh, and we had a look at Bitcoin uh, cryptography mining with Litecoin minus slash D, on, again on Linux Fedora Workstation 35. Uh, we had a double at using it to run a virtual machine with the Linux server uh, with the intention of connect connecting the Adobe Creative Cloud that we have on a Windows box in the studio via a broadband router with a yellow Ethernet cable or a network switch. And it was too much for the slog, so we quit. We've got something going, but it was just basically too much for, you know, it was too much, too much. Uh, so... We may revisit them and get them cut properly, get get them done right. Uh, but for now, we're not going to work on that. Uh, what it is is, what's interesting is, um, so we've hit uh, Windows for a Windows Server 2022 build, and uh, all the tasks that we need to do, we uh, estimated that. Uh, although we spent about three months. Basically, on and off. In the meantime, these past couple of months, we started out uh, the second season of the Basic Materials Project, uh, moving over from SoundCloud. We're still going to post this on SoundCloud. Uh, so thanks everyone on SoundCloud. I appreciate it. The original and best platform, SoundCloud. Oh, from my humble opinion, for whatever that's worth. Yeah, so we quit. Basically, doing the C plus ASAP, the Linux Fedora, and the Linux server. Uh, we it was just the, these Linux command terminal stuff. We could uh, create a, a deployable package on it relatively easy. So you know, if you have uh, an interest in programming in C plus plus on Linux, check out that uh, C plus plus ASAP on Linux Fedora Workstation thirty five LFW thirty five. Uh, for the build environment, basically, once you follow those uh, follow those few tutorials, you get that build environment. And then you can get to work programming, uh, and then you can install it, uh, and then you can update it as well. And that uh, iterative build cycle initiate a bundle package. You know, it's initiate uh, on Linux. It's RPM package manager. Uh, it's open source C plus uh, CPP or whatever and make as well so uh yeah you can go back and check that out if you want once you've got that you have a package you can do version control with git for developers yeah so we got to a point basically in the c plus plus asap series where we there was a big leap between the simplicity and then we're heading into the bramble bushes and the complexity uh figured it wasn't worth the technical investment because the there's a heck of a lot to learn, basically, and if, you know, it's one of those things we figured, we calculated uh, on previous channel channel news that in 2022, it's better to develop on C-sharp with .NET 6 and the Unreal Engine. You can obviously get uh, an Xbox S-series Xbox, and you can sideload your applications as well, as get a beta on the Windows Store, as well as all you maintain universal Windows platform, which once you've got all that, which... You know, it led us to the conclusion that Microsoft kind of took and curve all of this. It's a paid-for product, and obviously the Linux and the open source is free. But the technical, it's a heck, of, it's it's way too much, really. Like honestly, it's all TT. And it's getting better. You know, you know, we've had, you know, we have some great successes. For example, if you want to make your own application from scratch. Uh, as simple as possible and if you're an individual developer who's kind of just doing it for their own personal uh, progression or there might be some software you'd really need in your own day-to-day -day work then that's great 
obviously you're going once you get past that simple you know the simple series then you have the complex which is dependent on lots of things for example you need the website domain uh, a server you need a clone server or a dummy server as well as workstations as well however we saw from the individual developer uh, so in contrast uh, a team of developers could log on to the domain in my case it's the basic material project and on linux if everybody's on linux uh, and they could all work on Git privately. Obviously, you can go to GitHub if you want, make it a bit more easy. That's kind of like making things easy. Is kind of like where Microsoft make all their money. Basically, they, they make they make all their cash by by making it much more human, right, and comprehensible. Java did the same as well. So they kind of put it on, put it in Java. The Java virtual machine will take care of everything else. We used the uh, metaphor. It's better to have an egg in a nest. Because the nest is going to take care of the egg, or uh, like building a ship. To, so to build a ship, you need to sink a hull in shipbuilding and boat building, and you know if you build a yacht or what have you. What you have to do is called you sink a hull. So and that's kind of like where the C plus plus ASAP came from. It's the hull if you develop your software on. And obviously, it's always good to work on something that's contemporary and is used daily and has a user base and has some sort of like. Like, because that, that's where you get everything else from. And it's something that developers, especially if you're an eternal learner, like where you're eternally keeping up with C++ conference, you're eternally following the anti-ISO standards, like you're eternally learning the new keywords, you're eternally learning the new versions. Like, that in itself, that procedure and process, uh, you can get... Uh, so, so making the transfer from being being basically a study of it, academic, and how it's done in the real world in business, like and one skill set is all good and well and everything like that. But you finding is you take a character from that and then you plop it in like a competitive build environment where the consequences are very real. For example, so for example, if you you know in the real world, vis a vis just you learning. However, that being said, individual developers can actually achieve a great deal, especially when managing complexity becomes an issue. So we really should do it as complex as possible. We have it in the microchips anyway. We have reduced instruction set computing and we have complex instruction set computing. There's a metaphor there. It's one of those things. As soon as you take it from an individual person learning to program C++ or developing individually, On it, on it, uh, it could be anything you want, especially on Linux. The we may revisit it, uh, basically. But you know, going forward, we've got uh, we've got a heck of a lot of other things to be getting getting on with. So just to f- tie up on that uh, loose end, uh, so we did a build doors coin from source with the Litecoin mining with a mining pool at litecoinpool.org. And we also built the uh, Litecoin wallet as well. On, we did that all online. It's Fedora. Uh, which is pretty cool. Get to see how it all works. And we did a little bit of mining. Obviously, we'd have to run it for about 25 million years for it to be worth about one US cent. Because it's just a just like, it's almost a little crummy computer. It's not a fantastic mining rig or what have you. And yeah, we're doing C++ ASAP. Once you've got done the C++ ASAP, you can push versions of your of your own project back to yourself, like because the package manager can tell. So in RPM on Linux, you build your software, you compile it, you make it, and you package it, and then you install it, and then you go back and you change the software, you add or take away features, you build out like that. So that means that if you get this iterative build process going, initially if you initiate yeah, the iterative build pro- process, basically you get the package, the RPM package, you can double click it and install it, and then you can push versions. Whereas a lot of people, they go uh, on a tangent and they do some C++, 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 and they push it and it doesn't work, well, especially in teams because they're all using their own compiler. It's not a server, a compiler server. Much in the same way that Blender, you can have a render farm on Blender or Avid, uh, Avid Pro Tools, uh, Media Composer first, stuff like that, where you have a, a central build environment. So all of your developers, when they hit build, they don't build it, it goes to the main builder instead. 
Uh, two reasons for this. Uh, number one is it allows your developers to get back to work instead of waiting 10 hours for the render or, or the compilation to come back. Uh, number two, all the developers on the team is built to the same specification, the same standards. Again, this is an important distinction between working in the industry and uh, learning, being a learner or an individual coder. And that just a... Well, ah, we said at the beginning that we'd start at the end and finish at the beginning. All right, so in the end, yeah, the idea is as a computer program, as a software engineer, is to have something you can give to a client or a customer that they can install and work with, something that is contemporary. It's a contemporary living project that has a user base. And that's really what the industry is. Look, that's, that is industry, that's the commerce of it. Whereas a lot of people are doing it uh, for their own personal self-development and that which is great. But you can also like got sort of like alter your perspe- perspective and say, oh, this has got to be a business, it's got to be economical. You know, everybody's got bills to pay, everybody's got to go to work. Uh, and, you know, you can... You know, you can carry on with a lone hero call the sort of thing a bit, or TT. Right? And then, you know, people rock up in an in industry and they don't they don't know any, any of these things, really. So they're trying to learn C++. They've been learning C++ for decades, have a dabble or anything like that, and never get anywhere or never achieve it. And next time they look, the standards have changed, the build environment's changed. So, you know, right now, the buzzwords, next year's... Cause Industry and commerce itself has marketing. And so you've got to understand how technology is pushed. Hey, we all know that, you know, we've all seen it, like whatever, some big manufacturer push, pushed an update and it's tanked everybody's computer, what have you. All right, so that's where the C++ ASAP and your one long coder type of personalities come in handy because they can build everything from scratch. Is it incomprehensible and uh, it's difficult and, and uh, you know, encrypted language, basically, is all that is. In those situations and scenarios, these uh, individual individuals, like, they're highly skilled, and, and they can rebuild from source, and they can push. Whereas everybody else that's on whatever commercial paid-for variant, if it goes down, they go down. So there's plenty good reason to develop yourself uh, as, as regards a computer programmer as well so there's plenty of good reasons to do that but also as well it's got to be tempered with a bit of balance you've got to look at how industry does it there's all kinds of ways obviously presenting it through a web interface as a website is pretty as you see with bitcoin and crypto and all of that uh other times uh you don't want any of that in your build it, it, you know it could be very uh you know self-driving cars for example, you're, you, you're going to want it to be as absolutely strict as possible with with the utmost strictness, the utmost uh, ISO standards, whatever, really, really rated, really, really tested until, you know, it's as solid as possible. Because, for example, medical equipment, the software in medical equipment has to be right. So there's legal standards and there's like legal build Uh, definitions, that's all, it's all legally, you know, because certain, in certain areas and certain fields, obviously, in business, yeah, you involve with the law, you involve with customers, you involve with everything else like tax, uh, insurance, uh, and the rest of it. But there's a certain sort of societal demand, basically, to not allow this sort of software to just like a virus will run wild or propagate, you know, there's a certain structural necessity and all this, so like the wild, wild west of the blockchain and the rest of it, it's all good and well, especially for youngsters who've got more money than sense and, they're, you know, they're still learning. As long as it doesn't go too far, I, wouldn't, I personally wouldn't put very much stock in it. Uh, my opinion is that Bitcoin, crypto, they're basically an investment in a software company or a tech startup basic without investing in a software company or, or bringing a tech store to market like it's a, like kind of like an alternative sort of like funding model so it's kind of the same anyway so yeah i've seen uh so anyway going forward we're now going to move anywhere we're going to move the discussion out to windows server 2022 and we're going to rebuild the basic Mysterio studio again this time instead of the linux fedora and linux server the workstation server combo 
combination with Adobe Creative Cloud on another Windows machine and the website. We're actually going to go and have a look at doing it now on uh, Windows Server 22. It's an evaluation edition. There's a couple of odd oddities about it. Like uh, We've had a, had a go at it. Uh, secure dr- device driver signing. It doesn't seem to play well with AMD chipsets, like if I'll be honest. Like it doesn't, it doesn't seem to uh, it doesn't seem to recognise AMD. A lot of features on AMD, and there's definitely a trusted platform module like Secure Boot thing. I've disabled it because it causes applications not to load. Uh, what else have we got on Windows Server 22? However, creating, administrating, basically. Like, because I've fallen over, these projects have fallen over due to me not actually having any Linux administration sort of thing. Like, it's not, you know, it's not an issue programming. Just like most people, it's, it's, the C++ is the easy part. You know, a lot of people think it's the hard part. It's not. It's relatively simple and straightforward. Uh, Basically, all you've got to remember is C++. Primarily speaking, it, it has mathematical notation. So when you read a maths textbook and you look at the maths, can it all be the same? Uh, like, without overcomplicating it. Because I know, uh, in, say, for example, in the UK, there's, there's still universities today that are pushing the C++ 95, what is it, C++ 98 standard. Basically about 25 years old. It will still build, mostly. It, it will, technically speaking. And not only that, if you build... You could build that code with a compiler today in 2022, whatever, 25 years later. In, in, in general, it will build. It's still good source code. There's all sorts of, like, for example, if you look at some of the open source builds, we looked at Dogecoin. There's odds and ends in there from the 80s. There's whether well, still copyright or some open source releases from the 80s with source code. It's like Windows Server 2022. It's not all new code and built from scratch. Due to this iterative build process, which is what this continuous development, continuous integration thing is kind of about, kind of the whole purpose, it's a drive through basically. It works kind of just like a drive through If you can keep your McDonald's going, people will continue to drive through and buy burgers. Basically, it's that mentality. Like, it's not a, a, a neighbourhood barbecue or what have you. Like, you know, it don't, you know, it's... TikTok, 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 you know. Same, it's got that sort of like commercial mentality superimposed on it. And yeah, yeah, sure, some people are going to be like environmentally friendly vegetarian heroes and uh, use open source and Linux. Like, I don't know if it's just out of spite. Right. But then again, can you afford Microsoft products to not cheat a Windows operating system and it's retailing for about £125 in the UK? Linux, of course, is retails at zero. So you, you know, and amplify that out to a, a business that that runs several thousand computers at the same time at a busy call center, what have you, all dependent and relying on all this kind of stuff. The fees certainly go through the roof, and obviously the Microsoft they program the software themselves in house and sell license access basically. So I mean, if somebody made a Linux that you had to pay for, yeah. It probably improved Max, but it probably end up just like Windows in a way. So maybe it's a left brain, right brain thing, you know, depending on your mentality, like or you know that that that's basically how 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 the cookie crumbles. There is a third sort of party sort of thing going on in terms of ANSI A N S I O slash I S O standards as well. So if you actually look behind the scenes, there's build standards. That something that perhaps in academia you will not know, you won't, you won't have uncovered that yet. Like, because, you know, there's the toy world, as it were, and there's the real world, but there's also the hypothetical world. So it's, we're, you know, kind of like bouncing between all three of the worlds. Like, obviously, you've got to learn, you've got to learn it, but also it's just frustrating because what you really need is a software product or a software package that either you are using or some of your customers are using. As a client base, like I'm hopefully paying for, like so again, it's an aftermarket industry. It's absolutely massive. When you think about it, uh, yeah. So uh, here we are again. It's Windows Server time. Start from Windows Server 2022. We're gonna do all that. We're gonna clone the basic material project.com. 
Uh, we're going to rebuild the studio server on Windows Server 2022. And the desktop is the same old uh, garbage little desktop. It's a good little workhorse that desktop. I use it mainly for Adobe, cutting podcasts. Uh, but we're going to join the domain, the Windows domain. Uh, it seems that we've got to do, we've got to clone the website domain and have the Windows Server clone clone the, the website domain and then have the Windows Server. Now that it's been cloned, it clones the web server out there, the www.thebasicmaterialproject.com. It clones it, is a, and it, but it just happens to be here in, in the studio. So, And then what will happen in the studio, the server, so the, 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 the desktop, the workstation desktop, goes, goes to the Windows Server. And it uses Windows Server uh, to test out the Adobe Creative Cloud features, such as Adobe Dreamweaver. And then and obviously you can move it then into into the real world where users will interact via your website. You see, so obviously we hit we hit a, a barrier basically in terms of complexity over the recent episodes, basically, and that and that to make that leap, like is is. May have to bring in a member of staff, uh, maybe get get somebody to do it for us or outsource it. Bring in a bring in an Adobe, somebody who knows about Adobe to take care of that. Uh, and with the Linux thing, the server thing, or the Windows server thing, again money. So we have got financials as well. So we've got to always be deliberating about where it's cost effective. Uh, it's one of those things. Yeah, all the big news that's going on is these uh, 12th gen Intel laptops that are available for pre-order. They're paying about 1500 quid for DDR5 standard and PCI5 standard. A uh, lot, ton of money. Uh, but what you're getting for your money is incredible. Uh, cutting edge, bleeding edge. And it is that competitive. And you know what? Six months down the line, a year down the line, Apple's going to have an even more amazing product and Samsung going to have it an even better product. So this continuous development, continuous integration, obviously AMD and NVIDIA and what have you, this uh, iterative build, you know, in, initiate. So in the initiate process to get the layer process down, we have that. And once we've initiated a project, we have the build make compile build link package okay so what's it now it's in a bundle or a package for example on windows it's msi uh linux in our particular world linux the linux store it's a dot rpm and you just double click it and it installs that's kind of what your end user kind of like that's how they're going to interact with with it but so you need that before you can put a bitcoin wallet on it you can put uh Website looks, you know, APIs and stuff like that, uh, and what have you. So you could build a little piece of software online that people could install it, and it could be one of these HTML apps. You can contact your website and, and get information. Uh, however, to provide that on the other side, so this is what we're gonna have a, have a look at, yeah, because it can be done open source. However, it's incomprehensible. So we're going to go, instead of doing this on Linux, Fedora, and uh, Workstation and Server Combo, we're going to do it on a Windows Combo first. So the next episode, or the next little project stream will be uh, Windows Server 2022. And then we'll revisit, after that, we'll see it done. We'll do it, we'll see it done, we'll achieve it. And uh, then we'll go back to Linux and see if the Linux is a bit more comprehensible, because... As soon as we moved past the as simple as possible phase, and simple as say that it didn't work, like you know, like there's a, a bit of a hyperlink, and that, I guess that's network administration. All right, so we did all right. Uh, we had, a, had an attempt at building Dogecoin. We get, got some crypto mining with Litecoin, and we looked at uh, building the, and initiate uh, an iterative build process that ended up with packages and the ability for us to push the next version like like for example you get automatic updates on your computer don't you and it says oh uh, there is a new version of the software please update sort of thing now getting caught up in this cycle you've got to know how this continuous integration or this continuous development this continuous integration cycle works so because you can lose a heck of a lot of sleep over it it can drive you mad really Right, so and obviously we discussed last time. I, 
we discussed about what kind of thinker you are. If if you're sort of Mr. Text and you can remember text and the, the Linux command line, you've got to be ace at it. And if you can get your head around that, if you're more visual, you know, you're probably best using Windows. Uh, it's a bit like we it's a bit like something we carried over from making music on Ableton. Making music with keyboard and mouse is a bit autistic. Well, I don't use that in a negative word. Sometimes it, some people is, are very good that they're autistic. And it is kind of autistic to use a keyboard and mouse to do something like make music. So, hence uh, synthesizers, drum and bass machines, etc. Which are, are less, you know, you know, they're a bit more, bit more like it. Or, for example, when we did in the box uh, mixing using Isotope plugins versus doing a real mix in the real world with an analog mixing desk. Like the difference, like. You know, so sometimes sat there with a keyboard and mouse and doing all these things isn't the best way to go about it. Obviously, the Adobe people have a little pen, don't they? And they're always drawing and sketching and stuff like that. So you've got to, like, sort of, like, kind of not... If you're that particular person, though, who's particularly into text or command lines and stuff like that, then you are the most powerful uh, IT guy in the industry, basically. If you like that, you... That's highly regarded in the industry, but it's it's one of those things. It, it entirely depends on what kind of thinker you are. Right? I mean, so if you, if you're into like color and, and music and sound, dynamism, sat there with keyboard and mouse, or it's okay, it's just text. It don't really work, like because you've got you got to like like you know, you got to like understand yourself. Right? and it's like making music with a keyboard and mouse on Ableton. Yeah, you can you can do it. And all that, but that being said, it's not the same. It's not the same as jumping around like uh, with you know on a set of turntables or what have you. It's not. It's not the same interactivity. Same with drawing works of art, like the passionate movements and stuff like that. You'd want paint and some paint brushes and you know a bit of sculpture and the rest of it. So you don't, you know, it depends on your own mentality, really. And yeah, it is a product of minds, mentality, and that. And yeah, there has been there's been historic reasons why things are the way they are, like like control alt and delete or odds and ends. The same with the power supply, the ATX power supply has been the same for decades. When I first started out in the nineties, I was building uh, three eight six PCs and uh, AMD K five and that uh, Matrox graphics cards. That I would run, I think ISA Pentium hadn't even come out. Yeah, I remember Pentium came out with like cartridges, like like a Sega cartridge or a Nintendo. Like a NES cartridge or what have you. Just plugged it in. And Windows 95 just come out. And there's still novel network as well. Uh, with a T1, T2, T3 and T4 brown cable. With a bayonet cable. That was called the uh, Humble 1.4 megabits per second. Was it, was, that was like lightning fast. Everybody at that time was on dial up. So, uh, and obviously the network infrastructure behind it actually was run using DTMF tones and such, such like. So today it's MPLS, so it's ATM slash MPLS, kind of like the standard. Uh, whatever the G, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, because there's a whole bunch of stuff as regards to network as well. Uh, that's the Cisco sort of area, the Cisco Nortel Nokia sort of area. They're like uh, electronic engineers that uh, specialise in uh, the infrastructure of the global communication net- network, you know, cable boxes, network switches, broadband home form, and a modern router for the broadband home form, with a yellow Ethernet cable, and it goes into the telephone line, those sorts of things, and also the main junctions. Anybody who's worked in tech support uh, for retail and home phone and broadband will know all this. I... Uh, so this iterative build model, it, it affects everything. It cycles uh, a bit like a tornado. It spins around and it moves everything around or impacts everything around. Uh, we had a bit of a warn a bit ago, TCP IP6 or something like that. We had a new gen. So uh, you have to understand the swap out model. Yeah. You've got to understand that canister. It's like a canister model or a swap out model. Like, if you can get that right, you can get your iterated build process going. Uh, you could build anything you wanted. You could build your own blockchain, crypto, Bitcoin, uh, and the rest of it. Now, of course, we got to... Uh, somebody made a great point to me, actually, recently. Uh, we've got this uh, thing going on 
in law. Yeah, so there's legal requirements why C++ makes demands on the compiler the way it does. Actually, most people don't think that, oh, I'm programming C++, I'm fly. Like, I'm super fly. But there's all sorts of laws behind it, and stuff like that. Especially as regards encryption, and but also safety. And as uh, we mentioned it, uh, CRISPR. Nah, it's not CRISPR at all. Nah, it's GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, here in England, in the UK. Uh, and there's, what's it, RIP, Regulation of Great Powers, and there's another uh, Data Protection Act, no doubt. They've all been bundled together as General Data Protection Regulations. It's why you got to have a cookie. On my website, we don't use cookies, so we don't really need to tell you we're using cookies. We're not using coffee, and we don't, we don't have Google Analytics or anything like that. It's just basic, basic materials, basically, right? And simple as possible way, right? As a resource, like you can get a bit of tech support going. So yeah, so this uh, Linux thing. So somebody said we've got to learn Linux, yeah, and we've got to get take it all on ourselves and that and and the way it's done because uh, regulation. So there's going to be more and more regulation, and that's why Windows Server is a choice of business. Linux got you know. Basically, everybody on the planet is running on Windows Server. And now, like, for example, Call of Duty, stuff like that, and now that it's owned by Microsoft, is running on Windows Server in the background anyway, probably. Like, in all honesty. And once you, once you get to the pinnacle, yeah, once you eventually make it to the top, you get a bird's eye view of it, you know, an eagle eye view, you get to see the layers and how it works. Like, and that... That in itself, these are, I'm not really discussing C++, even though we did the C++ ASAP series, we're not really talking about C++, we're talking about everything else, project skills, basically, which what people come from, you know, academic, they kind of like, don't have all these skills, they know C++, so they need to be put, like, the egg needs to be put in the nest, you know, to return to that metaphor, or, you know, they need to be in a position where they can walk up, they can get up, go to work, turn everything on and they don't need to worry about any of this there's a whole support apparatus that leads to it so if people are scratching their heads in the industry or move from academic environment to an industrial environment or they're sort of like entrepreneurs and tech startups stuff like they kind of need all this and that's kind of where a lot of people are going wrong basically and that's where microsoft are getting it right uh right they do actually get it right i've not experienced on apple I know about it. X called Safari WebKit. They had the Apple X server as well, which is great for a bit. It does still look, uh, look for in uh, music. If you're into Ableton and making beats and stuff like that, you can get an Apple Mac web server and you can stick it in your studio rack and you can run Ableton off it. Uh, pretty decent, really. You won't do too bad, actually. But obviously, there's leaving versions behind as well. End of life support. We spit. Something that uh, in open source doesn't occur well. So there's reasons why the both elements they kind of occupy different sort of like philosophies or different mentalities. All right. So back to my main point. Uh, this is what I'm uh, dawdling, blabbering on about. Is that forthcoming throughout 2022 and beyond, we're going to see increasing regulation superimposed on software. So, for example, trusted platform module, there's going to be legal requirements for businesses to have a certain encryption standard. Like all these things that aren't in open source, like, because if you don't want it, they just waste of electricity or waste of process cycles in a, regulator, a regulatory environment, you see. So, all these things from the Microsoft perspective, these are all kind of like the sort of things that businesses, industry, education, academia, uh, government, etc that are interested in because businesses work like that because businesses don't work like open source like like because open source is not a business like there's a need for all of these open source projects to be sponsored by industry as well like so it, it's perhaps a balance for example if you've got lots of money in the bank and that bank is running on linux it's probably more likely to be hacks and stuff like that, if truth be told, it, like, because the complexity of it all. Whereas the reality is, uh, 
a lot of people have uh, uh, got a lot of hope on, on blockchain technology and Bitcoin that and they think they're going to take the software market out and people are going to prefer to be on that. But I think the superimposition of regulatory environment it will it will have to adapt uh, for it to be legally used in certain areas of the, uh, of the world with certain departments of the economy or what have you. Something that... So, to strike a balance, we've got to develop on open source as well as on co- closed source to strike, you know, to, to moderate the, the extremes of each one. Obviously, if you put everybody on this uh, trusted platform module, TPM and you know, whatever the latest Windows and Windows service, there's all these security features built in. It's pretty solid. Like, there's a few faults and crashes in it, but I'm on an evaluation edition, so you expect it to fall and crash. But it's nevertheless solid. Uh, like I mentioned, something that took, took about three months on and off. Took about 30 hours on Windows Server. So if you're a business, you can't afford to spend three months putting this all together on Linux. Like, we've done it for the sake of the uh, channel. And so there's some information there as well, so people can hit that. Take it with a pinch of salt, of course. So, oh, oh, let's imagine that you're doing business, uh, and now, oh, my business is all run online. It's, it's incomprehensible. I built it myself, you know, etc., etc., etc. Oh, uh, would you like to deposit all your cash? This is oh, my business is on. This is extremely legally regulated. It's compiled and built to a legal standard, uh, an ANSI ISO standard. There's a regulatory framework. It has to be audited. Tested, checked, approved, etc. Or, you know, here's my autonomous self driving car. I built it using open source and blockchain myself. Who did you test it? Who did you test it? No, I didn't test it. I just built it myself. Would like to drive around in my car. You know, it's like jailbreak firmware on your mobile phone, ain't it? Really? So, oh, uh, so, so there's that uh, element of trust. And when you pay for products, there's legally binding agreements in that as well. So, Microsoft, for example, if Microsoft pushed a Windows server, it could get sued. And also, the government could take regulatory uh, action as well. For example, if it didn't fulfil legal requirements that businesses themselves are obligated by law to fulfil. See, so, you know, you've got to uh, take it with a pinch of salt and balance each, each, each field. Uh, but also as well in terms of like say if we take it to the the alternate extreme with, with this trusted platform module and this elliptic curve cryptography that is basically the backup and some new stuff was through with dynamic link libraries as well uh anyway that's that pretty was the well, windows for microsoft will push a product that'll take care of that and uh yeah Yeah, well, uh, every now and then you get a brain freeze, don't you? I'll have to listen back for the next episode. How are we doing for time? Still got a bit of time yet. Yeah, well, so take your pick. You know, I paid Microsoft, whatever. Microsoft are regulated by law. Like, for example, v- v- vis-a-vis, oh, I got this free open source Creative Commons which is all good and well in the rest of it, but what if I put it on my medical apparatus and it fails? That's going to have very significant consequences in the real world. Something that people high open source uh, kind of like, uh, don't really bring bring up. Or, uh, you know, whatever. What if it's uh, something absolutely significant? Then, you, so the, or a paid-for product all of a sudden looks, uh, looks cheaper than a free product in that in that regard. So, so you have to balance it out. Like, there's a lot of things to consider, but oh, yeah, Microsoft, oh, it's got this uh, trusted platform module, and uh, again, it's about these general data protection regulations. For example, if your business is handling information that's subject to the laws, then the software you're using to handle that information, as you can see, you'll see it in business if you're self-employed as an entrepreneur. You know, you're running a, a small call centre or your like whatever a team. You'll get where I'm coming from, right? So, you know, it's one of those things, Mister Dark. Oh, I'm all in the dark, programming crypto sort of things. All good and well, and you know, oh, I'm a I'm a hacker and all that. It's all good and well. 
Like, but it, there's also a point where that becomes extreme as well. Right? You know, of course, for, you know, for example, where, you know, some of this stuff can have very real consequences in the real world, so it ought to be regulated. Right, so that's, and you can't really do it without a pay for product. Or unless you get an open source project that's sponsored by somebody who has the cash to do it. Basically, so it's one of them. The uh, C ASAP is great. Once you've done that, the IRAF build process, you know, package, deploy, install, and then you can get that cycle going where you can keep pushing your next version. Version one, version two, version three, version four, and it he'll hit the end user. All they've got to do is click the mouse, really. Like, and that's kind of like you need all of that in in commerce and in the world. Whereas a lot of people are just sat there just programming or whatever, just for their own self development. But there's got to be a point where the educational aspect gives way to a commercial aspect. It's got not everybody's lucky enough to be sponsored academically. Right, so you've got to bear that in mind. It's why Adobe Creative Cloud is cheap for the monthly. And it is for what it is. You're getting every little thing. Really, as regards print, digital, film, and now into 3D as well. They've got some 3D stuff there. So running a Creative Studio like that, obviously, it's got to be on top of a Windows 10, which, again, has got to be on top of a Windows server, which, again, has got to be on top of a website as well. So we can see... Th- the massive blocks that I need taken care of. It's one of them. Hopefully your project will be a success. It'll be contemporary. It'll be a living project. Right? Because that, 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 you've got to remember as well, like, if you push a build on everyone and it faults, like, it's one thing if you push a build on yourself, you're an individual developer. Like, the consequences want to go so far. It's another thing, say, for example, if Microsoft push a build on literally billions of computers i mean i mean that and it falls so we have through the digital economy we have all these wave fronts moving through and we have all these new releases and new projects and new builds but we also have standards the ANSI iso standards as well that dictate a whole bunch of stuff that's why you have if say for example in infrastructure you'll have a set or you'll have a, a, a server cabinet and it can be filled with lots of different manufacturers from all over the world uh, from all states all kinds of technology we see it in music when you build it when you're building out a recording studio or doing doing all that sort of thing and the reason it all works is because of these standards basically to a lesser or greater extent and Obviously, cold shoulder, you know, some people, we can lock the market out. It happened in the 80s with networking, novel network and stuff like that. Back when Windows was DOS, and Windows didn't even exist, actually. Well, it was Microsoft DOS, when it disk operating system. The original command line. And obviously, there's all sorts of archaic stuff in line. It's even today, from like the 70s. And we're kind of stuck with it. It was the same with decisions that, for example, the IBM uh, format. But that's how massive industries make loads of money in patents and intellectual property as well. So, for example, everybody on the ITX, ATX format, that's an old IBM format. And I believe it, I think they still, I'm not too sure, but I think they still get royalty payments for it. And that, the format itself, that's why, if you look at every motherboard since at least the 90s, at least what I've encountered, the screws are generally speaking the same size and in the same place. For example... If you look at the power supply, again, the connectors are exactly the same and deliver the same same kind and type of power. So we could theoretically take a power supply from the 90s. I wouldn't want to give it a try, like, assuming it was electrically safe and you had a qualified electrician on there to test it for safety. You could probably power a computer that was built today with the same, because it's the same standard. Same with a fan, like a CPU fan may work. Obviously, the... Mm, you had a peripheral component into that PCI. So that's a PCI 5 now, was it? PCI 5, DDR 5. I remember DDR 1. You'd pay 100 odd quid for a 2 megabit slice. Uh, so again, the, those inner standards evolve, but yet the base plate IBM standard has remained the same, like the power, power connector, stuff like that. But obviously, within that framework, you have individual evolution like HDMI. You had VGA, and then you had all these other other types, DisplayPort and stuff like that, which is great for industry. They've got all sorts of stuff going on in there. 
So just uh, yeah, so yeah, we'll end here now. We just bear in mind the modularity of it. There's a reason why, like, but unless you're inside of that loop, you may run into difficulties learning the program in C plus plus or or what have you. If you want to achieve anything in real time this year, 2022, I'm going to offer some advice. It's only advice. Get on C sharp with dot uh, uh, net. The dot net six on the Unreal Engine and get yourself an Xbox S as well and. You'll have all year. You produce way more in terms of, in terms of your own productivity and that. Uh, obviously, w- the whole planet is caught on in update hell. Everybody's updating. You know, I'm updating my laptop. I'm updating my computer. I'm updating my phone. I'm I'm updating my status. You know, I'm updating my website. Right. So you've got to remember you're in that loop somewhere, and and that's how it works in industry. Uh, and obviously there's background industry standards as well uh, anyway this is just my humble opinion I'm going to have to get back to work alright uh, once again thanks a lot this is the basement to the project visit the website uh, like and subscribe alright until next time